Good afternoon. Today we're going to do explorations on cladograms and phylogenetic trees. So we're going to be in our packet on page 25 and we're going to be looking at what a cladogram and phylogenetic tree is and how we analyze it and how it relates to um, evolution. So first of all on page 25 there is a introductory paragraph. So um, please highlight as I um, read um, the intro paragraph. So in cladistics similar characteristics um, that come from a common ancestor are used to divide organisms into groups. A cladogram will begin by grouping organisms based off of characteristics displayed by the entire group. Subsequently, a larger group or clade will contain increasingly smaller groups that share the traits of the clades before them, but also exhibits distinct changes as the organisms evolve. So this cladogram picture is on page 25, and what I want you to do is I want you to add this line next to it, and I want you to draw an arrow going up, and I want you to um, identify this line as time. And so down at the bottom would be the most ancient time, and the top of the arrow would be most recent. And so when you look at these individual groups, amphibians, reptiles, marsupials, dogs, cats, each individual group is what we call a clade. And then down here you see four limbs, amniotic eggs, which just means eggs with membranes, hair, specialized shearing teeth, retractable claws. Those are all what we call derived characteristics that um, define the difference between each clade. And so on the right side, left side of this uh, cladogram are some questions. So it says, what do you call the group of animals in a cladogram, like amphibians and mammals? Well, we call them a clade. What do you call the hair and retractable claws? We call them derived characteristics. And so when you look at the derived characteristics, we're trying to look at what defines the certain clade versus the other clade. So if you look at amphibians, it says, what traits do reptiles have that amphibians do not? Well, reptiles have amniotic eggs, and so does everything else going forward. Um, but frogs do not. So anything that's any characteristic that's in front of the, of the clade group would not have it, but anything behind it would. So amniotic eggs is what reptiles have that amphibians don't. Now what's important about this uh, cladogram is it can show us commonality, common ancestors, most recent and most ancient. So when we look at time, this point on the cladogram is when the common ancestor uh, back um, in time maybe have diverged in these organisms. And so if you were to ask the fourth question, which group of organisms do you feel has the most recent common ancestor? So when we say recent, we want to be in a spot where um, it's closer up the arrow. And so we would want to say cats or dogs or dogs and marsupials. Well, if we said dogs and marsupials, their common ancestor would be right here. So if you go across, that would be where it was in time but dogs and cats go up slightly just a little bit more. And so they would be most recent because they're closer up in time. So the answer would have been A. So down um, at the bottom, when you learn how to fill out a cladogram, you kind of look at the derived characteristics and what has in common. So what I want you to do is cross out first carpenter ant. We're just going to do a regular black ant you would find on a picnic um, outside. And so what I want you to do is X what each um, organism has. So just take a moment and do that. Pause and watch the video and do that. Okay, so this so this is kind of what it should look like. And now what you want to do is you want to place these um, now organisms into a cladogram. And so um, you take these individual organisms, and there is a rectangle box, and you try and uh, place the organisms correctly in the cladogram. So pause and please do that real quick. See if you can practice doing it. All right, so technically, my apologies, but um, this line, all these organisms should be uh, lined up in a row. They should be all equal, and then the um, lines should begin to get shorter as you move up the cladogram. So um, it should all just be, so worm should be here, spider should be here, ant should be here, and fly should be here. But, so my apologies, it printed wrong, but... Um, so we put cells as the derived characteristic, and then worms have that. Then we put just regular legs, the next would be spiders. Six legs would be ants, then wings would be flies. And so there, are, if you turn the page to page 26, there are two questions on the top of page 26 to help analyze the cladogram, because you won't have to necessarily make a cladogram on a test, but you will need to know how to analyze one. So let's look at the questions. According to your cladogram, which two species are more closely related, worms and spiders, 
or worms and ants. So you need to look at your cladogram. We have worms and spiders would have been their common ancestor or which ones are closely related, not common ancestor, but closely related. So you need to look at on the cladogram, which organisms are closer to each other on the cladogram. And so you would know that worms and spiders are more closer to each other than worms and ants. So the, the answer would have been worms and spiders because they're more closer together. Um, and they have uh, the similar derived characteristic in common. According to your cladogram, what species are flies are more closely related. So you look up here in flies and you want to see the, no the organism that's closest to it. And so that would have been the ant. These two are more closely related than spider or worm, partly because they're close to each other and because they have the similar, they share most of the derived characteristics in common with each other. All right, so we have cladograms, and then we have something called phylogenetic trees. So I just want to give you just um, another picture. So this is a picture of a cladogram. This is a picture of a phylogenetic tree. They both show the same thing. You have lobster, lobster, uh, spiders, spiders, perch, perch, flounder, and they all have the same derived characteristics. It's just written in a different format, and it can quite, it can look a little bit better with visuals um, because the common ancestors here are so close to each other and these are actually very distinct uh, showing you the ones that are commonality so let's talk about a phylogenetic tree so a phylogenetic tree is a diagram that represents evolutionary relationships among organisms a phylogenetic tree is a hypothesis not fact the pattern of branching as a phylogenetic tree reflects how species or other organisms evolve from a series of common ancestors and two species are related if they have more recent common ancestors and less related if they have a less recent common ancestor. So phylogenetic trees can be drawn in various styles. So it could be written like this and you can also turn it to the side be written like this. Um, either way is fine for a phylogenetic tree. Um, so if you are on a clade and you see that the line is really long, it contains species that have diverged from a very long time ago. They have a very ancient common ancestor. If you see a clade that's short, that means they divide. They have diverged from a, re from a more recent common ancestor. So if you look here at this lobster, spider, perch situation, the ones that have a most recent common ancestor are going to be the organisms that diverged most recent on the time scale. Um, and so if they have short lines, that's pretty short right there, they would be the most recent. If you have a long line, so for example, this right here is a very long line. Here is the most um, ancient common ancestor down there. So on the bottom of page 26, it has you um, analyzing a virus phenotype. So it says the camel virus shows more recent common ancestor to which other virus. So here's the camel virus, and we're trying to see which common uh, most recent, because you have one here and here and here and here. Well, if you look at time, ancient to present, you would want to be closer to the present recent site. So that would be this one right here. So your answer would be human virus. Next question says, which virus seems to have not diverged into another clade for a long time? So you want to be looking at um, a clade that has a very, very long, long line. So this seems to be the longest line. And so the answer would have been the whale virus. It has not diverged into other species for a very, very, very long time. So the answer would have been a whale virus. Um, so what I would like you to do is um, go back to Schoology and watch um, a cladograms and a phylogenetic tree video review to help you get a better understanding of cladograms.